Howdy, folks. I'm a lying witch stuck in a wardrobe. I'm Amber. And here are some more clothes. All right, folks. Our first letter is titled, Am I a jerk for getting rid of all of my girlfriend's movies in her collection? Recently, a new game came out and I wanted to play it. My laptop couldn't handle it and my, I'm a 39-year-old male girlfriend, a 35-year-old female, Paula, has a really good gaming laptop. She doesn't play games though, and I asked her if I could come by and use it. We don't live together. She was generous and agreed. You should know that she likes old movies and TV shows. Whenever I ask her about something that she's been watching, and if it's any good, she'll often reply, no, but I still love it. When I was gaming, I noticed one folder which interested me. It had her movies and shows and episodes there. Shockingly, it was all downloaded, pirated. I know that she pays for newer movies, but these were like obscure 90s aughts shows and barely anyone's heard about them. I remember one or two that I watched as a kid. Honestly, it's really not okay to pirate movies and steal someone's work. I got really annoyed with her. I'm a small time content creator, so I know how it hurts to have your work stolen. I deleted all of it. And after I was done gaming, I told her about this. She called me a massive jerk. I said that what she was doing was illegal and she shouldn't have done it. She replied that she wouldn't if those things were easily available. Apparently, they're all almost impossible to find and it took her ages to track them down. She explained that for some shows, she was only able to find really bad original versions in English, but a good one in French, so she edited out the audio and it was a good English version. She said another was incredibly difficult to find because the studio lost all the copies in a fire. I told her that it didn't matter, it was still illegal, and if it's not possible to find it legally, perhaps she's not meant to have it. And it's not a loss if only a small number of people remember the show anyways. She said that she's doing it because she loves the shows and she wants to have them. She told me that she put a lot of work into this and I said that it's her fault to work on something that's illegal. She told me to just go away and called me a jerk. I said that at least now she won't have to worry because it's all gone. She laughed at me and told me that I was stupid if I thought that that was her only copy after all the work she's put into it. I asked her to delete it because what she was doing wasn't okay. She was really mean. She laughed at me and told me that that wasn't going to happen and asked me for my keys. I asked her why and she said that she had to think and told me that she would call me. It's been a few days and I haven't heard from her. I told my mates about this and they're split. Some agree with me, but said that I shouldn't have deleted it. Others told me that she was doing a good thing by preserving the media from being lost. I said that if it's so bad, no one likes it. Maybe it's best if it's lost, but they still took her side. Since they're split, I worry that maybe by deleting it, I was the jerk, but my conscience doesn't agree. Was I the jerk? Edit. It wasn't lost because she had everything on her disc, apparently. She so politely called me an idiot for thinking that it was the only place that she had them. All right, folks, what do you think? Yeah, I think Opie's being a jerk here. There are some questions around, like generally piracy is a bad thing. There are questions around the area of when there are no purchasable copies of a media, like there's a morally gray area, but that's not the point. Yeah. The point here is like, it's fine if this violates OP's moral compass enough that he doesn't want to be in a relationship. It would have been perfectly acceptable to say, hey, I see you have pirated media. That's a deal breaker for me. I'm yeah. out. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, I think that's perfectly reasonable stance that OP could have taken and they could have done this and still kept their morals. What OP did here was try to impose their morals on their girlfriend. And I think that's pretty controlling, to be quite honest. Yeah, and like treating her like I'm exactly what you said. Like, I'm the authority here. I dictate what is right and wrong, and I am going to fix this for you. Mm -hmm. And OP seems to only care because he's a small content creator. And if people pirate his works, then it's going to impact him. But the thing is that 20-year-old shows that ran on TV have already been, all the actors have been paid already. All the contracts have already been doled out. The peop, no one's trying to buy or sell this. So there isn't anyone who's losing income from this. And 
that stuff's no one no one's paying attention to it right well and back in the day we all had vhs players yeah. like i still have well i don't have them I, I, at my parents house they have copies like would tape tv show episodes to watch them and so like there's this obscure uh show miracles that aired when i was in middle school what well, they didn't even do a full series so like you can't find them anywhere but we probably have episodes that on on that on vhs tapes and that was totally legal yeah and so yeah there's a morally gray area here but it sounds like she has done a lot of work and if she was selling these mm -hmm. then i could be like oh this is actually really bad and wrong right exactly but she's not selling them they're her own personal collection it sounds like she bought originals and or acquired originals in one way or another in order to refurbish them and so in a lot of ways i don't see that there's any really morally you know problem here so well, and I think people are allowed to, uh, like, I have mixed feelings, and I think people are allowed to have mixed feelings on it, mm -hmm. but I think what's not okay is that OP then tried to impose his will on her. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I think that's perfectly fine to have mixed feelings, but I, I'm not saying that you should be one way or another here, but yeah. So I don't think that OP's girlfriend is the jerk, and OP, I am afraid to tell you, but you're single. <laughs> Well, and also like he's, he's like, some of my friends agreed with me, but think I shouldn't have deleted it. And it's like, so they still didn't agree with what you did. Yeah, like, yeah. They don't agree with you. They just might agree that maybe what she's doing is ethically ambiguous. So anyhow, take care and good luck. All right, folks, our next letter is titled, Am I a jerk for letting my daughter keep her sketchbook at my house after her mom looked through it without permission? So to start, I have 50-50 custody of my daughter, Claire, a 12-year-old female, with my ex-wife, Jessica. Jessica is married to Chris, a 40-year-old male, who has two kids, Addie, a 7-year-old female, and Luke, a 10-year-old male. Claire spends one week at my place, one week at her mom's. Sunday is the swap day. Two weeks ago, Claire had a huge fight with her step-siblings. Apparently, they snuck into her room when she was away and went through her stuff, breaking some of her important items in the process. And Claire screamed at them when she found out. Jessica and Chris wrote off Addie and Luke's behavior as kids being kids. I disagree. I think that Addie and Luke need a reality check for their behavior and that they shouldn't get away with it. However, they said that Claire's reaction was over the top and a sign that there's something wrong with her. Jessica decided that she needed to quote, find out what's in Claire's head. And so she confiscated Claire's sketchbook, which Claire uses to get her feelings out and went through it. Apparently, what she found was disturbing. Claire has shown me the sketchbook before and no, it isn't, and took Claire to a psychologist for evaluation. Spoiler alert, they didn't find anything. My daughter is completely mentally healthy, save for, surprise surprise, stress from her siblings. Anyways, I got Claire last Sunday and she spent her first few hours with me holed up in the room, sketching, I think. At dinner, she told me what happened, and I surprised her with pancakes for breakfast the next morning to make her feel better. Before I gave her back to Jessica, Claire asked me if she could keep her sketchbook at my house so her mom wouldn't look through it. I said yes, and she went over to her mom's place without it. Yesterday, I get a text from Jessica. She said that she was worried that Claire forgot her sketchbook because she went to confiscate it, and it wasn't where Claire usually keeps it. She then asked me to arrange a time and place to pick it up. I said that the sketchbook was with me and that I decided to keep it because I didn't want it to be confiscated again. I didn't want to throw Claire under the bus here. In hindsight, lying wasn't probably the best idea. She said that I was being the jerk because she has the right to her daughter's mind. I said that I was worried because of how she handled it last time that she went through it. She restated that her previous point and I did not respond. It's been about a day since we had that conversation and I'm starting to question my choice. Am I the jerk? All right, folks, what do you think? Jerk or not the jerk? Not the jerk, OP. What you did is absolutely right. And I would start documenting all of this stuff that she's doing because oh, yeah. this is not good. First of all, she does not have a right to her daughter's mind. I was just using her exact phrasing there, yeah. but you know. Um, your daughter has a right to privacy even as a child she has a right to have some place to put those feelings she has without adults like taking her like her personal feelings and making 
you know, their own interpretations on that. So, I mean, I certainly think in rare cases where you feel like your child is in imminent danger or risk, that there's a little bit more of a precedent that you can look through your kid's stuff. But I think there are very rare uh, rare and few times when looking through people's stuff is warranted. Well, but to be fair, that would be the same for adults you yeah. are concerned about. Um, so... I think that she's exerting her authority unnecessarily and she's definitely favoring the stepkids. Yeah. Like, it's totally reasonable if your your siblings go in and break your stuff, that you're going to be upset. You're going to yell. That's not over the top. That doesn't mean that you have some deep-seated, like, emotional issue. No, and I don't think that... I think that Jessica's actions here were uncalled for. I don't think they were appropriate. She went to get a third-party opinion. Maybe she thought her daughter was troubled, and she thought that her original actions were justified. But even the psychologist agreed that this is perfectly fine, and that the biggest problem is the stressor between the step-siblings. And I think, like what Amber's saying, that documenting this and finding out what other things she's doing is going to be really important, especially if you're going to attempt to gain full custody of her. Yeah, because I have a feeling that it seems like there's already favoritism going on toward the stepkids, and it feel it seems like Claire may not be playing happy family enough for their liking, and they're trying to basically bully her into playing happy family. Like, oh, well, clearly you're just, act just acting out. There's something wrong with you, and your daughter may soon need a safe place. Like, this is already indicating that her mom's house is not a safe place. So make sure to keep track of everything so that if she starts feeling unsafe in her mom's house, then hopefully you can get custody. Yeah. So anyhow, take care and good luck. And Winter Sweet P465 says, Now the jerk and your ex has lost her marbles. OP document everything. Everything. Their response to your daughter's very normal behavior and sibling stress is disturbing and suggests that she's being scapegoated in that home, especially as they are excusing their other children's behavior as normal, which means that they are excusing other harmful behaviors as well. Where will it end? I would encourage you to consult a lawyer and petition for full custody. You don't want to let this abuse continue. Making your daughter out to be the villain in all of this and the right mind nonsense is screaming mental health issues with your ex. I grew up in a house like this and wish someone had rescued me from blame and erratic adult behavior. Your daughter needs you to step up now and be the parent that she needs. All right, folks, our next letter is titled, Am I a jerk for humiliating and demasculating my brother in front of our family? My brother and I have a very strained relationship. In most of our family's eyes, he's the golden child. I'm just the extra kid. Growing up, he overshadowed me at every possible event and milestone. He was the pride of the family. I was just the one that cost more money. My brother followed my father's footsteps and joined the military right out of high school. He served about eight years before he got out. Unfortunately, when I was younger, I was diagnosed with some form of epilepsy, which I was fortunately able to outgrow, but it disqualified me from joining as well. Anyways, a few years ago, I got into shooting competition, specifically three guns, rifle, shotgun, and handgun, and I got good at it, and I'm now in the process of being sponsored and going to national competitions. None of my family really cares, which is fine, but my brother decided that every opportunity he could use would explain to me why there's no way that I'm as good as him and that he's way better than me because he's a combat trained person. After this came up a little while, I called him out. A long argument later, he agreed to do a mock competition in front of the family by his invitation. Mom, dad, sister-in-law, and a few others. A buddy of mine who sets up for these competitions agreed and set one up for us. Four stages, three general, one head-to-head. -head. All done safely and under supervision of actual professionals, using gun safety and proper management. I provided the ammo, sealed, provided the firearms, my personal competition guns with my backups, and even got my friend to be a ref. I let him sight in and practice, gave him the equipment as well. I'm trying to get rid of all the possible excuses. I destroyed him. By the last one that came, we did the head to head and I cleared my side and then I cleared his half of his side as well. He made excuses, which I would dismiss. I gave him multiple opportunities to restart or try again. He then said that I was a jerk for humiliating and demasculating him. My parents also called me a jerk 
and some other words. Sister-in-law stayed quiet until we were packing up, me, my friend, sister-in-law, and my girlfriend. The rest were coddling my brother. She thanked me. My girlfriend asked if I really had to finish off his side, which I admit was me showing off. It got to the point that my mom said that I couldn't come over for Mother's Day until I apologized to my brother. When I refused, she called me a jerk again and said that I couldn't come back until I apologized and made it up to him. All right, folks, what do you think? Not the jerk, but like I might recommend going no contact with these people because this does not seem like healthy family dynamics. Your brother yeah. is being a giant jerk. You know, he he has to be the star of everything and everyone swoons over him. And when it's shown that he can't walk the walk, then everyone's like, oh, oh, Piyuja apologized for hurting his feelings and making him look bad. And it's like, no, he insisted he was better. You showed it wasn't true. Yeah, I mean, I think that your brother is just being ridiculous. Like, <laughs> why would he... He, you won fair and square. You gave him plenty of opportunities to be as equal as possible. You gave him every advantage that he needed, and he didn't succeed. And that's just it. He's not the better shot. This was a fair competition, and he deserved to be humiliated after believing, for some reason, that his <laughs> little bit of military training would make him a better shot than someone who's going to a national competition. Mm -hmm. Like, give me a break. Well, give me a break. And I like how, I'm assuming sister-in-law is probably his wife, uh, how she thanked OP. Like, I think that's a sign. Like, I mean, well, we can see his ego dripping through all of this, but yeah. like... <laughs> maybe she's not, maybe she's tired of his nonsense mm -hmm. here. So yeah, I don't think you're a jerk, OP. Anyhow, take care and good luck. All right, folks, it is tea time. Grab your beverages of choice. I've got a beverage of choice here. And Amber has a joke from Boredom Bear. I haven't seen the punchline. So, Amber has. How does a penguin build its house? Well, I can tell you how a penguin builds its house. You might think, well, Brian, penguins, they live in the South Pole, and there's lots of snow there, and they must use the snow. And I would say, that's a really good guess, but wrong. Penguins, if you'll believe it, are quite the engineers. They, are, they, they go out of their way to, like, find concrete and build their homes they're like they're like made out of brick man they're bricks those are brick houses and penguins they don't mess around because there are walruses in the south pole and those things are vicious so yeah they they go all out they build themselves proper homes with brick mortar all that stuff it glues them together <laughs> it glues them together Pretty good. I like that. That's a pretty good punchline. Thank you, Boredom Bear. We appreciate the joke you sent along. And I have Earl Grey. All right, folks, that's all the time we have for today. Thanks so much for watching. Happy Wednesday. Happy hump day, folks. I hope you're all having a happy Friday, Junior's Eve. I think that this is hopefully a good week for you. Amber, we need some kind of moral guidance. And please, make it the slogan for some company. I feel like this would be a company slogan. All right. Well, I mean, I feel like it's a general slogan, but I feel like a company could use this. If you can't walk the walk, don't talk the talk. <laughs> I mean, that's a slogan. That's a slogan. We could have that. What's the what's the brand? What's the company? Uh, the company is uh, Honesty Coaching uh, Honesty firm. Honesty Coaching? <laughs> I, I, okay, I like it. That's fine. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching, and we will see you all tomorrow. Bye. But if you're a lying witch, how can we take your word at it that they're closed? It looks like Reddit to me. They might be Reddit, but they're probably closed. It's a wardrobe after all. Their wardrobes generally have clothes in them and not, like, entire worlds of Reddit. But you're a lying witch, so how can we trust that you're in a wardrobe? You can't.